A single fighter jet costs more than most people will earn in 10 lifetimes. Now imagine 80 of them packed onto a floating fortress the size of a small city. One mistake, one spark, one wrong move, and billions of dollars could vanish in seconds. Yet the U.S. Navy does this every single day, storing some of the most advanced machines ever built in one of the most dangerous environments on Earth. The question isn't just how they do it, it's how they've perfected it to the point where accidents are almost impossible. What you're about to discover will change how you see American naval power forever. Right now, the United States operates 11 nuclear-powered aircraft carriers cruising across the world's oceans. Each one carries around 80 aircraft worth billions of dollars combined. These aren't just parked planes. They're combat-ready machines that can launch, land, refuel and rearm faster than most people can imagine. But here's the real challenge. Storing these jets safely while sailing through storms, combat zones, and hostile waters. The engineering behind this operation is nothing short of genius. From massive underground hangars to electromagnetic elevators that move faster than your car, every detail is designed for one purpose, keeping America's air superiority untouchable. If you're proud of what our Navy accomplishes every day, type proud in the comments below. Today we're pulling back the curtain on one of the military's most impressive logistical feats. How does the U.S. protect billions in fighter jets on a ship? How do they move 30-ton aircraft between decks in under two minutes? And why is the newest carrier class revolutionizing everything we thought we knew? Stick around, because the answers are bigger than you think. The Billion Dollar Inventory Let's start with the hardware. The jets stored on these carriers aren't your average military planes. The F-35C Lightning II, designed specifically for carrier operations, costs over $102 million per unit. That's not a typo. $102 million for a single aircraft. Then there's the F-A-18E F Super Hornet, the workhorse of carrier aviation. Recent contracts price these jets between $65 and $80 million each. Add in specialized variants like the EA-18G Growler for electronic warfare, and you're looking at a price tag that climbs even higher. Now multiply that by 80 aircraft. You're looking at roughly six to eight billion dollars in fighter jets alone sitting on one ship. That doesn't even include the helicopters, cargo planes, or support equipment. It's a flying investment bigger than the GDP of some small nations. And all of it has to be stored, maintained, and operated in the middle of the ocean, often thousands of miles from the nearest airbase. These aren't just expensive toys. The F-35C is a fifth-generation stealth fighter with advanced radar systems that can track enemy aircraft before they even know it's there. The Super Hornet is a proven, multi-role fighter that can dominate air-to-air -air combat and strike ground targets with pinpoint accuracy. Every single one of these machines represents years of research, testing, and engineering. Losing even one would be a strategic and financial disaster. So how does the Navy keep them safe? It starts below deck in one of the most impressive spaces you've never seen. The hangar bay, the hidden garage. Here's something most people don't realize. When you see footage of aircraft carriers, you see jets on the flight deck taking off and landing. But that's only a fraction of the story. The flight deck can only hold about 20 aircraft at a time. The rest? They're stored two decks below in a massive underground hangar bay. This isn't just a parking garage. The hangar bay on a Nimitz-class carrier is 685 feet long, 110 feet wide, and 25 feet high. To put that in perspective, it's longer than two football fields and tall enough to fit a two-story building inside. And it's packed. Over 60 fighter jets, spare engines, fuel tanks, weapons, and maintenance equipment all share this space. It's organized chaos, but the Navy has turned it into a science. The hangar bay is divided into four separate zones, each sealed off by massive sliding steel doors. Why? Fire safety. If a fuel leak sparks a fire in one zone, those doors slam shut, 
containing the blaze and preventing it from spreading. It's a fail-safe system that saved lives and aircraft more than once. But the hangar isn't just for storage, it's a fully functional workshop. Maintenance crews are working around the clock, replacing parts, running diagnostics, and making sure every jet is mission ready. At the back of the hangar, you'll find the Aircraft Intermediate Maintenance Division, or AIMD. These are the men and women who keep the fleet flying. They repair avionics, test engines, and troubleshoot systems that most civilians have never heard of. And here's the kicker. They do all of this while the ship is moving. Imagine trying to fix a $100 million jet while the floor beneath you is rocking back and forth in 15-foot swells. That's just another day for these sailors. But storing the jets is only half the battle. The real magic happens when they need to move between the hangar and the flight deck. That's where the elevators come in. Moving mountains, the elevator system. Before we dive deeper, please take a second to like this video and subscribe. Over 98% of viewers watch without subscribing. It costs you nothing but makes a huge difference to us. Moving a 30-ton fighter jet from the hangar bay to the flight deck sounds impossible. But the U.S. Navy does it dozens of times a day using some of the most advanced elevator systems ever built. On Nimitz-class carriers, there are four massive aircraft elevators. These platforms are big enough to hold a fully armed F-A-18 Super Hornet and can lift it from the hangar to the flight deck in under a minute. They use a cable and pulley system similar to what you'd find in a high-rise building, but on a scale you can't imagine. Each elevator is strong enough to carry 130,000 pounds. That's heavier than most commercial trucks. But here's where it gets even better. The newest Ford-class carriers have completely redesigned the elevator system. Instead of cables, they use electromagnetic linear motors. Think of it like a giant maglev train, but vertical. These new elevators can move 24,000 pounds of aircraft and weapons at 150 feet per minute. The old system? Only 10,500 pounds at 100 feet per minute. That's more than double the capacity and 50% faster. Why does speed matter? Because every second counts in combat. When a carrier is under threat, it needs to get as many jets in the air as fast as possible. The Ford class can sustain 160 sorties per day for over a month straight. In a surge scenario, it can hit 270 sorties per day. Compare that to the Nimitz class, which maxes out at 120 sorties per day with a surge of 240. That difference could win or lose a battle. But the elevators aren't just for aircraft. There's a whole separate system for moving weapons. Ford-class carriers have 11 advanced weapons elevators. Three of them move ordnance between the main deck and the flight deck. Seven more move weapons from deep storage up to the main deck. The entire system is designed so that bombs, missiles, and ammunition never cross paths with aircraft movement. It's organized, efficient, and built to prevent accidents. And here's the genius part. The weapons magazines on the Ford class are twice as tall as the old ones. That means weapons can be stored fully assembled. On older carriers, missiles and bombs had to be broken down, stored, and then reassembled before use. That took time. Now everything is ready to go the moment it's needed. The Navy estimates this design cuts the distance ordnance has to travel by 75%. Less distance means less time. Less time means more firepower when it counts. These aren't just upgrades, they're game changers. And the best part? The system is so automated that Ford-class carriers operate with 700 fewer crew members than Nimitz-class ships. That's 700 fewer salaries, 700 fewer bunks, and billions saved over the ship's lifetime. Why storage below deck is critical. You might wonder, why not just keep all the jets on the flight deck? It seems simpler, but there's a reason the Navy stores most aircraft below. The flight deck is one of the most dangerous places on Earth. Foreign object debris, or FOD, is the number one enemy. A loose screw, a stray bolt, even a small piece of metal can get sucked into a jet engine and cause catastrophic failure. On a flight deck where jets are constantly launching and landing, FOD is everywhere. Keeping aircraft in the hangar reduces exposure to debris and keeps engines safe. Then there's the weather. Aircraft carriers operate in some of the harshest conditions on the planet. Storms in the North Atlantic can bring waves over 30 feet high. 
Salt spray corrodes metal. Wind can shift a jet that's not properly secured. By storing aircraft below deck, the Navy protects them from the elements and extends their operational lifespan. And let's not forget combat. An aircraft carrier is a high-value target. Enemy missiles, drones, and aircraft are always looking for a way to cripple it. Keeping jets on the flight deck makes them sitting ducks. One well-placed strike could destroy multiple aircraft in seconds. But below deck, they're shielded by layers of steel and reinforced bulkheads. Even if the flight deck takes a hit, the hangar bay is designed to contain damage and keep critical systems operational. The hangar bay isn't just storage, it's a fortress. The crew behind the operation. None of this would be possible without the men and women who make it happen. The crew of an aircraft carrier isn't just a group of sailors. It's a highly trained team where every person has a specific job and every job matters. Take the aviation bosun's mates or ABs. These are the people who control everything that moves on the hangar deck and flight deck. They direct aircraft, operate elevators, and make sure nothing crashes into anything else. It's a job that requires constant focus and split-second decisions. One mistake could cost lives and millions of dollars. Then there are the aviation mechanics. These sailors can diagnose and repair complex systems most civilians have never heard of. They work in cramped spaces, often in extreme heat or cold, and they do it with tools that have been specifically designed for carrier operations. If a jet has a problem, these are the people who fix it. Fast. And let's not forget the ordnance handlers. These are the brave men and women who move bombs, missiles, and ammunition. They work with live explosives in a confined space on a moving ship. One slip, one spark, and the consequences could be catastrophic. Yet they do it every day with precision and professionalism. The U.S. Navy has spent decades perfecting the training and procedures for carrier operations. Every crew member goes through months of specialized training before they ever set foot on a ship. And once they're on board, the training never stops. Drills, simulations, and real-world operations keep everyone sharp. This is what makes the American military the best in the world. It's not just the technology, it's the people who operate it. These sailors don't just do a job, they take pride in what they do. And that pride is why the U.S. has the most powerful Navy on the planet. The Ford-class revolution. The Ford-class carriers represent the future of naval aviation. The first ship, USS Gerald R. Ford, was commissioned in 2017 after years of development. The second, USS John F. Kennedy, is set to be delivered in 2025. Two more are under construction, with plans for even more in the future. So what makes the Ford class so special? It all comes down to efficiency. The new Electromagnetic Aircraft Launch System, or EMALS, replaces the old steam catapults. Steam catapults were loud, inefficient, and required constant maintenance. EMALS is smoother, faster, and more reliable. It can launch heavier aircraft with less stress on the airframe, which means jets last longer and require fewer repairs. The Advanced Arresting Gear, or AAG, does the same thing for landing. Instead of using hydraulic cables that jerk the plane to a stop, AAG uses a computer-controlled system that brings the aircraft down smoothly. It's easier on the plane, easier on the pilot, and easier to maintain. Then there's the island. That's the tower on the side of the ship where flight operations are controlled. On the Ford class, the island has been moved further back and is 20 feet taller than on Nimitz class carriers. This gives flight controllers a better view of the deck and frees up more space for aircraft parking and operations. All of these changes add up to one thing, more aircraft in the air, more often, and in modern warfare, air superiority wins battles. The Ford class is designed to dominate for the next 50 years. Future of Carrier Aviation The Navy isn't stopping with the Ford class. The future of carrier aviation is already taking shape, and it includes something most people never expected, unmanned combat aircraft. In 2025, the Navy awarded preliminary contracts to four companies, including Boeing and Northrop Grumman, to develop carrier-capable drones. These aren't just surveillance drones. They're full-scale combat aircraft designed to fly alongside manned fighters and carry out strike missions. The goal is to have a working prototype by late 2026. 
Why drones? Because they can do things human pilots can't. They can pull high G maneuvers that would knock a pilot unconscious. They can fly longer missions without fatigue. And if one gets shot down, there's no loss of life. It's the next evolution of air combat. Another big addition is the MQ-25 Stingray, an unmanned refueling aircraft. It's designed to extend the range of F-35Cs and Super Hornets by refueling them in mid-air. This means carriers can project power even further without needing support from land bases. The combination of manned and unmanned aircraft will make U.S. carriers even more lethal, and all of it will be stored, maintained, and operated using the same systems we've talked about today. The technology is advancing, but the mission stays the same. Total air dominance. Conclusion. So there you have it. Storing billions of dollars in fighter jets on an aircraft carrier isn't just about finding space. It's about engineering, logistics, and the dedication of thousands of sailors who make it all work. From the massive hangar bays to the electromagnetic elevators, every detail is designed for one purpose, keeping the U.S. Navy the most powerful force on the planet. The men and women who serve on these carriers don't just do a job, they protect freedom, they project power, and they do it with a level of skill and professionalism that's unmatched anywhere in the world. The next time you see a carrier on the news, remember what's happening below deck. Remember the billions in technology, the years of training, and the pride that drives every single person on board. The U.S. Navy isn't just storing jets, it's storing the future of air power. And as long as these carriers sail, America's dominance will remain unchallenged. If you found this valuable, hit that like button and subscribe for more content like this. We've got more incredible military stories coming your way.